Uh, good morning everyone. So today I'd like to take the opportunity to discuss with you the work oh, you be a little bit higher. I'd like to take the opportunity today to discuss with you the work we have done into the application of Raman spectroscopy into the rapid field identification of LCT pegmatite mineralogy. So to give you a bit of background into the context of this project, exploration of the LCT pegmatite systems has increased rapidly over the last four years due to the increase in demand for lithium. So one of the problems that comes, or one of the challenges for exploration of LCT pegmatites is that visually many of the minerals are very similar. And so an aid that you can turn to, in addition to your uh, field geologists, is the use of spectroscopic instrumentation. As has previously been mentioned by several present, uh, presenters, unfortunately, due to the anhydrous nature of many of the LCT pegmatite minerals, uh, they are not active towards techniques such as shortwave infrared, uh, and your portable XRFs uh, are not necessarily a robust technique for the identification of lithium, which is your economic, which is your economic me uh, metal. And so unfortunately, using these two methods, you may not necessarily be getting a, a, an, a whole uh, view of your deposit. So while not necessarily extensively used in exploration at this point in time, Raman spectroscopy over the last decade has been widely reported uh, in literature and academia for the successful identification of dominant and associated LCT pegmatite minerals. And so this includes things such as your feldspars, your lithium silicates, uh, polycite, garnet, and of course quartz. So we were luckily, lucky enough to have Pioneer's uh, Sinclair deposit uh, to perform or to collect data for our analysis. And so we were able to collect over 8,000 sp uh, spectra from drill hole samples and over 2,000 spectra from grey control samples. So to give you some theory behind this technique, Raman works via a monochromatic laser being directed at a sample where a very small percentage of this light is involved in the chemical vibrations of your mineral. So during this process, the energy or the frequency of that light will be shifted, and so this is what is then measured on your scale. So as you can see by the spectrum there, we measure Raman shift, so the change in energy or frequency from that original incident laser. So due to the unique nature of your minerals, this then gives you a fingerprint spectrum via which you can perform mineral identification. So as with many spectroscopic methods, your best approach is to have a reference, reference library. And so we uh, developed a custom LCT pegmatite library that included over 300 spectra covering 56 of the dominant and associated minerals reported for LCT pegmatites. So this technique is particularly useful for exploration purposes because it's non-destructive, uh, you don't require any sample preparation, and your water does not impact the spectrum in the fingerprint region for mineralogy. And your analysis time on average is only about one to two minutes, which gives you that rapid instant identification. So because it doesn't need any sample preparation, this can be applied to many, many of your main mediums, such as RC chips, diamond core, or your hand specimens. And so this can be applied in various ways, such as you have your immediate verification or identification. So this can be used by field geologists while logging core to either support um, their, their predictions or to identify something that is unknown or it can be used in grade control sample, uh, grade control procedures. So that real-time analysis during ore extraction uh, in conjunction with some chemical methods as well. You can also extrapolate this, or we have investigated extrapolating this into your bulk analysis. And so this involves uh, the lo logging of drill core via spectroscopic methods and then extrapolating this into your mineral mapping. So for our project, we used the Brooker Bravo Raman, and so the features of this that made it suitable for these applications, there is a field portable instrument, sort of yay big, so it's very um, easy to handle. You don't have any of those health and safety issues as it just uses a class one laser. Uh, and it, this particular instrument uh, has, uses sequentially shifted excitation algorithms. And so why this is important for Raman spectroscopy is one of the adverse effects you often have with excitation of your uh, mineral sample by a laser is you have the unwanted effect of fluorescence. And fluorescence is a much stronger response than your Raman spectrum. So on the top right, we can see this is a reported spectrum for eucryptite, which has uh, fluoresced upon excitation, and so the uh, and has completely flooded the Raman spectrum, and you cannot perform mineral identification. 
However, on the bottom right, this is, these are samples of your main lithium silicates that we collected, and you can see that all three we were able to identify with clearly distinguishable spectrums, and so therefore we can perform accurate mineral identification. So while your automated spectral matching is generally very good, we, can, we feel that we can enhance in this through the extraction of um, particular spectral features. So one of your limitations is that uh, due to the nature, the chemical nature of your minerals, minerals within the same uh, mineral group are going to fundamentally look very similar um, on their Raman spectrum, as the chemical vibrations are going to be very similar. So by actually using a spectral extraction to have a more in-depth or accurate uh, extraction of the smaller changes in the spectra that are result from the chemical differences, we can then more robustly separate out things, for example, I have on the slides, your micas into things such as your lipidolite, which is your lithium bearing, versus your muscovite, or to your feldspars, so you can have your plagioclase versus your K-feld, um, plagioclase versus the K-Fels bar. And so this just adds to a more robust identification on, of your mineralogy. So for a bit more of a visual example, this was a piece of core that we received from a client. And we were able within just a few minutes to identify the main zones where we, uh, visual identification was uncertain. And so we could pick out your areas of your cryptite and quartz. And so while this is uh, informative for the direct zone from where this core came, uh, this is then informative to a field geologist that they can apply for future um, occurrences of, of similar mineralization. Uh, another good example of where spectroscopy often complements and supports a geologist in the field. Uh, while uh, collecting a lot of the scans, we noticed there were several spectrum that were not actually described by the mineral library we had compiled. And so we're actually seeing a mineral that was not originally reported or expected for this deposit. And so through more robust investigation, we were able to identify this as a calcium-rich plagioclase, uh, sorry, <laughs> calcium-rich mineral, which previously had just been allocated to calcium-rich plagioclase. And so while this might not be fundamentally groundbreaking for this particular deposit, it does demonstrate what spectroscopic analysis can actually add on top of uh, the geologist log, where you might have minerals that are visually very similar. And so your understanding of your mineral system is actually further developed. So on to bulk analysis. This is an example of one drill hole that we scanned. Um, and so we were able to then bulk scan by the meter down the drill hole and then identify using both the automated matching and then further um, analysis via our spectral extraction to identify the main mineral components. And this can then be um, go into the identification, uh, identification of your pegmatite zones down hole. And so while this can be done during the exploration procedure, we can also apply this to your blast holes during uh, your grade control procedures as well. Um, and so with both of those dual hole analyses for grade control or exploration, we can extrapolate this into mineral maps. And so on the bottom left here, this is an example of, a, of the predicted albite zonation uh, for the um, Pioneer deposit. Um, where we were able to identify the albite down hole and extrapolate this into your 3D mapping for predictions. Uh, of what was possibly of more value and more interest, we had the opportunity to do high density Raman scanning, which hasn't been done before, um, using the grade control samples that were coming out of the mine. And so on the right here, this is an example of one, one bench during the, during the, uh, the grade control scanning. And so while we were not only able to identify uh, the polycyte core for Pioneer down the centre in yellow, we were able to both identify your lithium silicates and actually delineate these into your eucryptite and petalite. And so being able to have the successful delineation in addition to just your chemical identification via, say, portable XRF, it allows you to have more inform uh, be more informed when it comes to stockpiling your minerals. So you may want to be able to separate out, say, your spodumene uh, to your petalite to your eucryptite. And by having um, sorry, <laughs> by having your mineralization in conjunction with that chemistry in rapid, um, rapid uh, time so you can have the reports back at the end of the day, uh, this allows for um, uh, real-time decision making. So just to summarize really the key points of Raman spectroscopy is a, a technique for the exploration of LCT pegmatites. Uh, so it's a field portable, it's non-destructive and it doesn't require your sample preparation, so perfect for exploration and mining. 
for specifically for your LCT peptides, we can do rapid mineral identification and of most value we can delineate those lithium silicate minerals which are of your economic value. And this can then be extrapolated into your mineral mapping for further predictions of exploration um, or for the predictions during your mining process. Thank you very much. Yeah.